Good afternoon, Salam, Salam Sajatra. So, uh, very good afternoon to Dr. Puad and Dr. Zuraiza, who are the deputy uh, deans for the uh, research and innovation and the HEPA, respectively. So, I will go directly into the system, the e learning management system. So, I, I need one hour of your time. Thank you very much for your time. I need one hour to cover up all the system aspect. And I will, I will, you will interact with the system now. Okay, so so this is the URL. It is smartv3.ums.edu.my. Okay, so once you access the URL, you can log in using your HR Online version four. You use your user ID and your password of HR Online. It's a single sign-on. So your user name will be your HR Online ID, and your password will be the same password as your HR Online, which you use for stars and the other HR Online uh, entry and exit login. If you cannot access it, uh, please inform us. Don't worry if you uh, all your colleagues who have missed this session will be conducting a one-day IDP course on this entire process. Okay, so those of you who are interested can enroll for the IDP course uh, with uh, BSM and you will get uh, full training for the entire system. Okay, can you all log on or do you have difficulty logging on? You can try and log on with your phone please. I will. Can log on? Can log on. If you have a problem, you can inform us and we will try and correct it. Okay, so if you log on, the next step will be to enroll for your course. Okay, now. Uh, Zul and I are the lecturer and you are the student. I will teach you how it's done so that later on you can actually do it as a lecturer yourself. Okay, now we are going to enroll as a student in a course which Zul has created for you. It's a demo course. Okay, the course will be here. So after you log on, so I'm going to step by step. After you log on, so Zul Fadli is logging on. So you log into the system. Okay, so you, can you see this window, this kind of a browser window, or is it taking time? Can you see the browser window? You, yeah, you won't see the browser window. What I need you to do is to enroll for the course. So you'll have to go down to the, the home, go down to the administration block. Home. Go to home, uh, doctor, you try it out. You go to home first, home button. And then you will see below that the Pusat E Pambalajaran icon there. Down there, just below. Home and below. Just go down to the page. It's just the bottom of the page. Go to home and find this course. Pusat E Pambalajaran. Okay, click on that. Can access? Cannot access. Can you log on? Login, login can. Oh, because on your, okay, regarding the cookies, okay, the this website, actually Smart V3 under JTMK collects cookies from your browser. So if you are disabled the cookies, please enable, enable cookies. So the, the system can actually pull the cookies or basically collect cookies from your system. Are you in the home? Can you see this? Okay. So if you see this, you will see here the Roadshow, go down there. The Roadshow Smart V3. Click on Roadshow Smart V3. Okay. So after this session is over, those of you all who want to create your account, please give your name to Zulfadli. We will, uh, he has administrative control. He will create your lecture account for you. Okay. But for now, you are enrolled as a student because I want to sh demonstrate the functions in the system. Okay, so inside that you have a demo course, FKSW. Can you access this? Demo course, FKSW. So once you access this, click enroll, enroll button, enroll as student. Enroll as student. You can enroll into the system as a student. Okay, enroll as student because I want to show you how the system functions. I need you as a student to generate the analytic. 
you see the analytics uh, system uses the analytics, so it requires students to enroll. So we need to show you that, so we ask you to enroll as a student. So once this uh, taklimat is over, you can actually become, I will revert you back to lecturer control. Okay, so Zul will change you back to lecturer. Okay, so the first thing which you see on, when you see this uh, system, right, we wanted you to not get shocked. We don't want you to get culture shock when you shift from smart two to smart three. So you should familiarize with the new template. This is the base template, the basic template. Okay, to start with, you click on the turn editing on. That's a turn editing on button. You cannot do it now because you enrolled as a student, but we will give you the instruction in video format and you can just follow step by step. Okay, so you turn editing on. Once you turn editing on, the interface changes from green to red. When it's in red, it means that this is the editing mode. Okay, so wait for a while and then you wait for it to change to red. Okay, with this system, you need to watch that circle on top. So it means it's still loading, it takes some time to load. Okay, so the basic format for this is 14 weeks. 14 weeks of lecture. If you need to add more, you can add it directly into the system without going to administration blocks. Okay, okay. This is the course template. As you can see on top, the button has changed from green to red. If it's red, it means the editing is on and that you can, the student cannot see the changes which you have made. So once you complete all the changes, you turn editing off. Now, if you see the blocks here, this is actually having 14 weeks of lecture. If you need to add more, Okay, go down to the end. Okay, you, you have 15 weeks of lecture or 16, you can just add it directly here. So he'll just add a weeks, it'll add one more week. So you tell it how many more weeks you want to add. So this is different from Smart2 because it allows you to add directly into the system without going into the administration settings. Okay, you don't have to keep on going back and forth. Okay, so this is, he has added one more week. Now, the next step, if you don't want to teach by date, you want to teach by topic, all you do is click click on the button to edit, you add the topic. So he will add lecture one or topic one. So you add topic one. So that's your topic one. So everything in the system is designed for one click on the same screen. You don't have to go back to the browser and back and forth as with the earlier system. We will look about, we will look at the 173 to the basic, okay? You want to add an activity or resource first. That's the first step. You need to add your course synopsis. So the logo for course synopsis, the icon go down. The logo icon for that is the synopsis. So that's a synopsis. Okay, earlier the synopsis icon was a PDF red. Okay, and this one it's PDF blue. So this is the first one. So Zul can add the course synopsis directly. So a table four goes into that. So you add course synopsis. Add. We are going to have a uh, web fault. We will have to have the issue with the line, prof. The line, line issue. It's a line issue. The internet is uh, slow. Yeah, very slow. That's why we need a quicker internet connection. So the internet speed will vary from faculty to faculty. Uh, some are very fast. Some are very slow. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So this is the course synopsis. So he will write the course synopsis and you can put a description in the course synopsis itself. Okay. Just write course synopsis. You can put a description. Okay. You need to click. Okay. This is a very important button. If you want your student to see it on the first page of their handphone when it opens up. So you click display description on course page and then you can add your PDF file. Okay, you add your PDF file to this, you add PDF file directly. So you take a course synopsis, you pick a PDF file and then just add. So just drag and drop. Okay, this system prefers drag and drop as compared to the older system which allows you to upload from folder. Your course synopsis is in, okay, go up to the end bottom of the file, go to the bottom. Okay, 
and click on activity completion. Okay, now this system is very unique because you can track the activity completion with analytics. You can basically assess student performance. We are using the student performance. So in order to switch on the analytics, you need to do this uh, completion tracking button. So you click on completion tracking, you click down, and then you can student activity when conditions are met. Okay. So what this means is that the student will only be able to click the activity completed when they download the course synopsis. Okay. This is very important for us in terms of the legality of uh, informing the student. So earlier we used to give the student the synopsis and we take signature. So in this one the system will actually capture that. So once the student uh, download the synopsis, they cannot say later we did not have table 4. It's in the system. Okay, it's recorded in the system. I'll show you how it tracks everything. Okay, so now you go down and then you save and display. Save and display or save and return to the course. Okay, now this system has another feature which may be useful for you and when we do the full IDP training, uh, the, we will teach you that. It can actually uh, check the competency in terms of the LO, learning outcomes. Okay, for that you have competency button. So to do that, you will have to bring your table for when you come for the IDP training. I will show you how to set the competency for each module or each topic. So we'll, uh, it's, that's why you have the competency button. So now you save and return to the course. And then you will see the synopsis in the system itself. Okay. So now you can see it uploaded, the first one, which is the course synopsis. The next thing which you need to upload is your activity or resource. So this is where you add your uh, lecture notes. So I click lecture notes. So I click on the same button. You slide down and you go to the file. So you add a file. So you add the file. If you have multiple files, you can you use a folder method. Now this one can only accept 10 MB file. Okay, so if you want to use a file which is above 10 MB, you need to convert to a different format or split it into two formats. You can add zip file as well. So you add the file, you add the lecture. So instructions or the learning outcome. Display on the course page and then you can drop in your lecture note. Okay, drag and drop the lecture note. Again for this one, you need to uh, do the uh, setting for the uh, activity completion. So always remember for this thing to set it, show activity as complete when conditions are met, which means that the student actually viewed the lecture or downloaded the lecture. Okay, this is important, otherwise you cannot track the analytics at the later stage. Okay, so that's what it shows. Okay, so save and you display, save and return to the course. So you have lecture. Okay, so now you have your course synopsis and your lecture. The next thing which you need to do is add the assignment. So the assignment, again, you go to the same, add an activity or resource, and then you go to assignment. So this assignment will enable the student to upload an assignment into the system. Okay, so you click add assignment, you give them the specific instructions, or you can give them the rubric if you need to use a rubric. Okay, you have your assignment, you can give the assignment name. And then you have your assignment rubric. So your rubrics can come in here, intro introduction part. You display description on course page. And then you go up and you allow the student to uh, upload the assignment. Now in this one, you can do a cutoff date. If you need, this is as per the old system as well. But again, you need to go down to the last part and do the uh, the activity completion. You need to set this or else it will not be able to track the activity completion. Okay, and then you save. Save and display. So save and return to the course. Okay, now you have your you have your uh, synopsis, lecture and assignment. Okay, the next thing which you need to add is your comment or your feedback. So you can add an activity or resource and then you add your feedback feedback button okay feedback button so feedback is the one which enables you to receive feedback in each course now if you see the best practices of our peers from other universities like UPM USM U, U, UIA and all they are all using the feedback for each topic because that is the real blended learning where the student can give feedback to each lecture so you give a feedback again you do feedback you give instructions for the feedback you can give them instructions there are other settings inside so you click display description and then you go down to activity completion. Okay, for this one, for feedback, there is no need to click that button unless you are giving the student marks for activity. 
Okay, this feedback is one. For example, if you said every feedback will get one mark, okay, then you can click that. Otherwise, you don't set it. Other student will be forced to feedback, give feedback. If not, you just leave it as it, and then you go and you save and return to the course. Okay, save and return. So you will see these changes in your browser if you are logged on to the system. You can see it in your system coming up. 